returning to Shelby for a brand new 2021 Audi RS6. I am very, very excited to see what it's like to live with the brand new RS6. Now that car is owned by Brandon. I'm back. Yes, he is back. This is a temporary trade. I'm not like actually trading my car in, but we're gonna spend a couple days with it. You are going to enjoy the 350R, yeah. yes. It's gonna sound a lot better than your car. I know, you know. <laughs> but this thing, the RS6, Avant. I am very, very excited. As a former RS7 owner, getting to try out the brand new RS6. Also, wagon. Wagons. That just makes it cooler than the RS7. Wagons are better. One thing the RS6 definitely is superior at is cargo storage. So the Shelby really is, is so full that I actually have to put my backpack with a gimbal in it in the passenger seat. Now there is space back there because no back seats, but this roll bar does kind of take up. But I'm gonna move everything over to that. We'll swap keys and I'm gonna go drive the RS6. Stepping into the RS6, look at that. Goodbye Shelby, we'll see you soon. This is my first time seeing my car drive away. All right, back to this. They currently do not make RS6 all-weather bats yet, so you get A6 ones. Red quilted stitching. I'm gonna set up my phone and head back to work. I am so excited. So, so, so excited. Soft closed doors. Ah, I've got RS6 for a couple days. It's good to have friends like Brandon. Hope he enjoys the Shelby, because I am going to enjoy this car. Setting up my wireless car play. I think we're working. Let's go. First little 20 minute drive in the RS6, not bad. I've already driven the new RS7, same year as this car, and it feels very similar. On a freeway, put it in comfort mode, it cruises along. This thing masks speed so well, even more so than my RS7. I uh, was just kind of driving along, and all of a sudden noticed I was going much faster than I expected, so I had to slow down and put adaptive cruise control on. With the RS mode buttons, we're in RS1 now, so it sounds a lot better. We've got it programmed to faster uh, transmission shift times and better engine sound. Almost Google back to work. For four miles. Yes, thank you, Google Maps. Google Maps is hooked up through Apple CarPlay. We've got Spotify playing some music. I think it's awesome. It is now nighttime, so you can see some of the cool light stuff. Audi Sport puddle lamps. Also, the seatbelt surround lights up with an LED, so it makes it easier to find. That is pretty awesome. You don't get the whole light bar out back with the A6 rear end. Up front, laser headlights. All right, let's see how the new RS6 sounds. We have a little bit of a tunnel. All right, it's the next morning. We took the RS6 out to dinner last night. It was pretty awesome. I'll talk a little bit about um, some of my initial thoughts with that. But first things first, let me show you guys what happens with the RS6 when you unlock the car. So you have the key right here. It's the newer Audi key. It has a little RS badge on the back, but the unlock button. You had that cool little dance with the laser headlights. Really cool animation. And since the car's been sitting overnight, we can do a cold start. Let's see what it sounds like. Complete cold start. Audi Sport badge, illuminated RS6 door sills. Accessory on. And the valve just closed immediately. Come on, give us a little bit. I'm in dynamic mode. Open valves, open. Nope, doesn't want to participate. Sound. Is something I think this new RS6 and RS7 needs a little bit of work. That's quiet. I mean, it's not quiet, but compared to like my previous in RS7, it's not. It's not that that loud. But anyways, let's head to work. Easy cruise to work. This thing is so quiet inside. The roads are not great. We're on Lake Cook Road right now. Air suspension and comfort mode is absorbing the bumps nicely. So while I'm parking, we have a ton of different cameras, including the overhead view, but here's the really cool thing. The 3D view, you can pan it around and it shows real-time things around you in the background. Put it in reverse, we'll put it into the spot. You can watch, look at that, that's so cool. This is actually kind of hard to do looking through a camera screen with one hand on the steering wheel. 
quick Chipotle run in the RS6 for lunch. The wheels on this thing are just so massive. I had a bunch of people comment on them. They're like, are those really 22s? Yep, 22 inch wheels of the upgrade size. But also look at the size of those front brake calipers. They're the 10 pistons. I think they sourced them from the Panamera. And the rotor is hilariously enormous. It's like the size of a wheel on a normal car, just a brake rotor. And then one other thing I noticed, the brake rotors are no longer the wave design. You, uh, you can get carbon ceramics on this, this one does not have it, just the regular steels. But before, like on my RS7, they have that kind of scalloped edge around the edge, uh, but this is just a regular circular steel now. Otherwise, you do need massive brakes though to uh, deal with the fact that this car is almost 5,000 pounds curb weight, it's quite heavy. Also, quite practical. I have a Pelican case back here of camera equipment. More space back there. Massive trunk. I really do love the way this thing looks. We've got roof racks on here now because usually there is a big roof box that is taken off for the moment. Soft closed doors all around. Navarra blue also just looks so nice in the sun. It's got that lighter flake to it when the sun hits it, darker everywhere else. I, I think this color looks good. With the blacked out badges too, black optics on this RS6. Biggest, biggest complaints are still, it's too quiet. Compared stock sport exhaust, compared to my stock sport exhaust RS7 from the C7 generation, this is much, much more quiet. There were, I don't think we get the gaslit particular filters or an OPF, whatever they're called in America, but the actual architecture and design of the exhaust itself might still end up making it much more quiet. You could solve that definitely with some sort of exhaust mod on it, but stock to stock, it is more quiet. This has also been lowered a bit. Otherwise, it's gonna have a two-hour meeting, so I'm starving, so I'm gonna go back and eat my lunch. Some nice interior things I've learned to love. This RS mode button is very, very handy. Instead of going through the drive select there, I simply click the RS mode button and it pulls up either RS1 or RS2, which you can change up. RS1 currently is set to, uh, I think, just speedy transmission. And if I click it right there, Oh, that's RS1, yep. Transmission is in sport and the engine noise turns on, but then RS2 is even sportier. Traction, ESC becomes uh, limited in sport mode and it's the most aggressive version, same with the suspension changes. Though also, we have a heated steering wheel, but there is no, I don't see a physical button anymore. You have to go in through this touch screen there. See these three little dots? You hit those and then you pull up your heated steering wheel. Getting used to the giant touch screens, actually not even getting used to, I am fully used to it now. Pulling up into the parking lot at work. We shall park the RS6. Say hello to Andrew's RS7 right there. Oh yes, oh yes, one other thing. The other thing, four wheel steering is brilliant. You legitimately feel it. When you're pulling into parking spots, parking the car, making U-turns, it feels nimbler. It's like smaller, a car of this size. The turning radius is actually really impressive. Now I haven't been taking turns at insanely high speeds to test the stability at uh, higher speeds of rear wheel steering, but I'm sure it also helps. This thing is very fast, wafts you along, uh, yeah. It's, I like this car, I like this car a lot. Heading out of work, back in the RS6. It actually does put a smile on my face just walking up to this car because it looks so awesome. Wireless CarPlay booting up. We are heading over to Mike's house where we're gonna take a couple other cars down to dinner today, but I've got about an hour drive from where I work to Mike's house and the art, but the seatbelt's not cooperating. Come on seatbelt. Uh, heading out over there, Mike at 312 Supercars. The RS6, it's very nice to have. I enjoy driving this. Double touch screens, heated and cooled seats. No massage seats though. Heated steering wheel is definitely nice because it is getting a little bit colder. Center screen, I have it showing. Uh, how's my music, whatever's playing on Spotify. Wireless Apple CarPlay, there's the maps. 260 miles of fuel range. And then if we change this over, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Also, exposed carbon fiber weave. This has a texture to it, doesn't have that glossy resin or whatever you have clear coat on top of it there's actual texture falls across the middle here and then all the way over the center this is all piano black i don't love piano black because it shows dirt fingerprints everything very easily but when the screens are off it does integrate very nicely because screens are glossy black so that does look nice red cross stitching there on the handles too on the seats and then you can see the blue ambient lighting once it's later tonight. I'll try to play around the ambient lighting and show you guys all the different colors and A6 floor mats because apparently they don't make RS6 all season floor mats yet. All right, we're getting on the freeway. 
let's see what this can do. I'm not gonna show the speedometer because reasons. <laughs> okay. It is fast. It is very fast. This new ZF transmission rips off very quick shifts when you're in sport transmission mode. But it's it's so it feels isolated, like muffled. That was full throttle and I'm in dynamic with the uh, engine sound in loudest, sportiest, dynamic, dynamic ist form, but I mean, we build speed very quickly, but it doesn't feel like you're going that fast. It's even more of a land yacht experience than the previous gen. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it's fast. It's fast. I mean, almost 600 horsepower will do that for sure. Also, check out that heads up display. We have the tachometer, the speed limit, my speed, what gear I'm in, temperature. I'm trying to hold the camera steady because I'm very zoomed in. But that is a lot of information, a lot more than the previous gen in the heads up display of the new RS6. I like it. Launch control. Oh my God. <laughs> we are about to hit 3000 miles in the RS6, which might make this car one of the highest mileage RS6s in the country. And right there, 3,000 miles in the RS6. It's pretty cool to be driving this RS6 because it is absolutely one of the first ones in the country. There might be less than 100 of these cars in the entire country right now. They're just hitting US dealers. And while this is not the launch edition, like the Nagaro one, uh, it's still definitely very, very rare. They haven't built many of these yet. And at 3,000 miles, given how new these things are, it might be one of the highest mileage ones in the country. We have arrived to park. Engine off. Door up. Okay, so we're here about to head downtown for dinner, but day and a half of living with the brand new RS6. Let me talk about my first top three impressions. One, the car feels very big. It is heavy. It is larger. It's more land yachty than before. Is that even, that's not, I don't know if that's technically a correct term, but it's, it's massive. Part of it might be psychological knowing that it's on 22 inch wheels and it's almost a 5,000 pound curb weight. But when you're driving in it, it feels so much more hefty than my previous gen RS7. It's still very capable and very, very fast, but no longer even has the remotest nimble type of feeling where the RS7 sometimes you felt like my previous gen put it in dynamic like I could pretend to try to keep up with like an R8 or something. This isn't doing it as much. The second thing is, uh, I forget what the second thing was. Oh, the second thing was a lot of tech. I like tech a lot. I like all the touch screens, the reconfigurable stuff, the ambient lighting. It's much more modern on the inside and I personally really like that. Heads up display of all that data, virtual cockpit, it's very nice. And the last thing is, it's very quiet in both a good way and a bad way. A good way, road noise is a lot less, a lot less wind noise. Part of that might be because the RS6 has actual full frame doors in the windows, whereas the RS7 body style car has frameless windows. So I got a little bit more wind, highway wind noise around like the B pillar area. The bad way is it's very quiet. The exhaust is not that loud. Uh, even though it has a sport exhaust, it's not that loud. As typical with a four liter turbo hot V, listen to them fans go. They run hot, put out a lot of heat. The lights look, again, kind of in line with the tech stuff. Just look at that. That's, I, I love that. That is very, very cool. Laser headlights. Puddle lights back here and the tail lights. Same type of thing, very modern looking. You lock it, they're sequential. And with that, I think we're taking the Pista and the A12 to dinner. Yeah, maybe we'll film a little bit of that, but having a nice dinner downtown with Mike and his cousin Ryan. It's an inside joke. We only refer to Ryan as Cousin Ryan now. But yeah, hopping out of a 600 horsepower RS6 into a 800 horsepower Ferrari, it's not a bad thing. His Royal Highness Mike finally has made a showing. <laughs> and now, it's very dark now, but... Yeah, you guys cannot... Which one do I take? A12 or Pista? Um... Uh... This is literally an impossible decision to make. I mean, here, here's what we'll do. I'll drive one on the way there and one on the way back. Does that work? Yeah, that works. That's and I think that's... on both trips, we'll put Mike I'm in the truck. I'm just recording you and your- Are you recording me recording myself? 
the lowest horsepower car here is an RS6 with almost 600. You can get 800 horsepower and 700 and something, and then that's like 0 0.3 horsepowers. <laughs> God, you know, I honestly don't even know why. Why we're friends? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure either. Check out that Pista interior. And the valves kill it. <laughs> Look at this, like, paragraph of text over here. All right, Ferrari 12. Oh, yes. V12. V12. A mic. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god, is this thing ridiculous. That was a very, very rigorous 65 miles an hour. 65? <laughs> that was more like 55. <laughs> but I just got tire spin at 75 miles an hour. This is absolutely... Thank god we got gas. <laughs> no, that's true, I've already burned through 30 miles. <laughs> oh my god. Oh SLS do that though? Can the SLS do that? Oh my god, we kicked out there. Holy, <laughs> holy. Well, Dinner's over, drove back in the Pista, back in the RS6, showing you guys the ambient lighting. Look at that. I can change the top color to different blues. We got purples, we got Mike. Sorry not to bother you. I'm gonna send you those pictures too. You are bothering those pictures shouldn't be shared. Those are private, Mikey. What are you doing? It's disgusting. <laughs> Set up to be on Insta. Set up to be on Facebook Messenger. Bye, Mike. All right, back to the ambient lighting. So you can change both the top and the bottom, just like in the A6 and the newer Audis. But I, I really, really like it. So we've got the top in purple, all the way across the color spectrum, matching like yellowish green, all the way to oranges. That, that this is just, it's fun. I like it. I know many luxury cars and even normal cars have various colored ambient lighting, but it's executed so well in the Audis. And then again, I pointed this out before, but I really like this. The light up seat belts. It's like a clear, bright LED. Not obnoxious at all. All right. I have an hour drive home and it's like already 11.45, so time to head home. And the RS, uh, whatever, what's, what car am I driving? RS6. Oh my God, I am tired. It's fairly dark on this road, but look how well these laser headlights illuminate the road. Just normal, normal headlights, not high beams, but these laser headlights in a new RS6 are truly impressive. Wrapping up my couple of days with the RS6, just fueled it up. Full tank, says range of 380 miles, which is just all right. I think it was at half and put 10.8 gallons in. It was raining earlier, but now it's nice and sunny out. This thing is quite fast, quite comfortable, and quite just isolated from the road. So it's a very nice luxury vehicle. But when you want to throw it around corners, it still feels like a big land yacht. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big boy. But power, the effortless torque. Oh, there's a speed limit. Put cruise control back on because Lake Cook Road has you don't want to speed here. Right, so wrapping up my thoughts on living with the RS6. It's obviously very, very nice, very luxurious. They've taken the technology to the next level. I can't feel any difference driving it compared to the brand new RS7. It's, it's the same car, just with the wagon body style out back, and it's $5,000 cheaper. So I personally would absolutely pick this over the RS7 because I think wagons are very cool and it's just more unique. That being said, it is out of the trifecta of RS7, RS6, and RSQ8. The RS6 currently is the most difficult one to get right now. It's not purposely limited to any specific production number, but just the way the priorities are going. And also, I mean, there is the fact that there's supply issues all over the planet due to many, many reasons um, that I think is also causing some limitations. I personally would not pay over a sticker. I have a very vehement dislike of dealer markup. So I wouldn't pay over a sticker for this car, but is it worth $120,000, $125,000? brand new given everything considered yes i i do like it i, I think it's a step up from uh my c7.5 2016 rs7 a lot more tech more performance more luxurious more comfortable there are some compromises and downsides depending on what you prioritize in a vehicle it's it's heavy oh look 
GT63. Nice. AMG GT63. Uh, one of the competitors. Um, it, it is cheaper than that, but those are also much faster and more powerful. Uh, I lost my train of thought completely. Depending on what you prioritize, this may or may not suit what you want. If you want something that's still a little more nimble and handles better, I have to say, even though the E63 rides a lot more firm, I think it also drives um, more sporty, whereas this is more wafty land yacht type of thing. You feel like you're cruising around in an apartment building. Very quiet covered many of the things already it's been fun spending time with this car it's been a lot a lot of fun i i think at my core i still am a big audi rs fan uh yeah there will be a formal review with cinematic b-roll coming of this car we will do the ownership perspective again i'm at 3061 miles brandon's been driving this thing properly and we chatted for a bit about how he feels about this rs6 and he says he is very much in love with it he says that it doesn't he doesn't miss the art as much anymore after driving it so we'll do more videos on this for sure uh just doing a quick little pan as i'm cruise controlling my way back to the office you can all see back there i've got a bunch of bags and duffel bags and stuff because this weekend we are going back to michigan with the 350 we're going to trade back in a couple hours with brandon and i have a 760 horsepower car next week so that should be a lot of fun i'm so spoiled i'm so spoiled just, i think the lowest horsepower car i'm going to drive over the next two weeks is my 526 horsepower shelby <laughs> all right that is the rs6 living with vlog for these couple of days hope you guys enjoyed it wanted to get this out as soon as possible because it is the new thing there are so few of these out there right now make sure you check out the full rs7 review and the videos i did on that nardo gray 2021 audi rs7 and with that hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for all the support and watching see you guys